Hello, this is Sister Lisa again. We're praying with purpose and power. Now, we're going to be talking about dispelling the uh, stereotype of the Jezebel and Delilah in women in ministry. Um, because it is a spirit. Jezebel is a spirit in Delilah. But it's always, you know, geared towards the women. And sometimes we are accused as women of God of being controlling and lustful and money hungry, man hungry, and uh, power hungry. And that's not always the case. So, God wants to really um, dispel all these stereotypes and dismantle and uproot everything that's hindering women from really flowing in God and flowing in liberty what they've been called to do and not be put upon, you know, different stereotypes and representation that God did not put upon women. Now, I'm going to be coming from uh, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Now, Jezebel, I'm going to read a little excerpt of Jezebel. Now, the Jezebel spirit is a controlling spirit. It's an evil spirit. Um, it is in um, Jezebel. It was a um, no, evil queen. If you look in First Kings, you know, 16 all the way to when she gets uh, uh, thrown out, um, she pretty much runs the, the uh, country. Uh, she runs her husband, King Ahab. And she worships Baal. She does not worship God, you know, and she's controlling. She's manipulating. She's seductive. Um, and she wants to get her way at all times. This was a, uh, it was represented as a woman at the time, but it is a spirit. But to keep on going, even Jezebel is mentioned in Revelations as a spirit that can be in the church, you know, that brings forth control, manipulation, seduction, and tries to destroy God's people, God's prophets, you know, tries to, you know, bring forth um, idolatry, you know, uh, sexual immorality, um, and anything that's not of God, every unclean act, unclean spirits, habits, that is what she for, that's what she represents. Now, in terms of, uh, the Jezebel spirit, it is a spirit that does not want to, you know, submit to God or submit to authority, period. Now, the thing is, the stereotype that's been put upon women is this particular text that I'm going to read now that Jezebel is based on appearance. Jezebel is based on also, when I talked about the last video, the angry black woman is based on if we're, you know, uh, talking, you know, too sassy, talking too smart or, you know, trying to bring our uh, opinion across or our point across or we're trying to make a statement or make a stand or actually, you know, come against something that's, you know, concerning that's not of God or something that needs to be dealt with, we are always put in a place as a Jezebel controlling spirit as well. But I'm going to talk about the appearance first. Now, in Second Kings 9, verse 30, it reads, And when Jehu, this is the new king, because they have gone now, was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, because her husband died being weak-minded and being, you know, submissive to his wife and her evil ways and not being submitted to God. Now, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tied tied her head. So sometimes they assume in certain cultures and religions that if you paint your face up and have red lipstick on, that's why I got it on, that you have a Jezebel spirit, that uh, Jezebel spirit is also manipulating and seductive. And the reason why I put it with Delilah, they have, you know, um, they kind of intertwine in some of what they do, but they are spirits that have inhabit male and female. And this is the problem. Um, it's always assumption that these spirits always just inhabit women. They run women, but they run into men as well, even more so even today now. Now, and look out at the window, and as verse 31, and as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And verse 32, and he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go see now this cursed woman, and bury her for she is a king's daughter and they went to bury her but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands and of course the dogs it was always prophesied that she was going to die horribly and the dogs will eat off her flesh and there will be nothing left of her now this is the new king of course and she painted herself up trying to be all flirtatious so sometimes they assume a woman who's flirty paints herself up looks good you know uh, dresses according especially in ministry that she has a Jezebel spirit these, these old religious and traditional spirits traditional spirits that believe this and sometimes they put upon us on how we look now um, in terms of appearance um, a lot of us have been put upon us you know 
different, you know, not to look a certain way, not to look, you know, too flamboyant, too, uh, too open, you know, uh, too uh, visible to other people so we're not distracting. But the thing is about the Jezebel spirit that it does not care, male or female, who it operates in. Now, Jezebel also, there's some qualities of the Jezebel spirit that you need to be mindful of and realize that um, to put this upon somebody who does not have this is not of God. And to assume that everybody has a Jezebel spirit and put that stereotype that all women are controlling, all women want to run men, all women want to run the church, all women want to run the ministry, all women want to run the world like Beyonce's song, that is not the case. But they have a place in authority in the body of Christ. And we have to realize as, as, as people of God that women have the right to have authority to speak according to what God tells her to do in decency and order. She can be submitted to leadership, she can be submitted to male, and she can be submitted to other people and leaders and still speak what God tells to speak and so um we're going to go to the qualities that jezebel spirit has systematically eliminate the representatives of god in israel she want to eliminate any representation of god this spirit does that and of course she promotes idol worship and then threatens to have prophets killed or destroyed uh, so she does send out demonic assassins to assassinate prophets to sabotage them to uh diminish their influence and to try to corrupt them or pretty much destroy them mentally, spiritually, physically. That still happens today, male and female. Now, threaten to have Elijah killed, believe kings and queens could rightfully do or have anything they want. Use her strong convictions to get her own way. The thing is about the Jezebel spirit, it is prevalent in leadership, male and female. It can operate in male and female gender. It is not gender specific, but at this time it was in her, but that spirit trickled on and moved on to somebody else and the thing you have to learn about it was spirits spirits once that representative is gone they're going to transfer to another spirit and if somebody's open whether male or female they're going to enter in so they're always looking for a representative to do their evil bidding so once jezebel the actual physical body left then it jumped into another person did another person did another person and it's still prevalent today because even god has said in revelations that he has something against one of the churches because they allowed jezebel to run the church and to overthrow the people of uh, overthrow the people of god and the prophets and uh, you know put them into a place of idolatry and sexual immor immorality which is what you see today. Now, also, um, she did not want to, you know, follow God, and she did not want to repent. And she used her strong convictions to get her own way. So, those, you know, those who use manipulation, control, um, um, they call it gaslighting. Um, while they make you assume that, you know, what you're thinking and what you are discerning is not true. And they try to gaslight and make you think you're something else. They can be very also accusatory. They also can be very threatening. They can also use their power or authority to abuse it as well and to manipulate your will, manipulate what you do for them and through them. So every woman of God is not like that. Some women are like some women and male are like that, but not all women are like that. And it's what God is wanting to realize that you need to discern the spirit in male and female. You need to discern the spirit where it's operating in whoever and whomever and it's important to not put it on one particular gender and assume because a woman is speaking her mind a woman is speaking her truth and there's a way to speak the word of god there's a way to speak truth it's a way to speak what your concerns and your point across as a woman of god in ministry without being considered to be controlling and also to tell you know to tell other leaders as well what they they need to be doing and what god is saying they need to do not always telling you know not looking like you're trying to tell them what to do but you're telling them according to what god is telling them what what they need to do there's a difference now that was the spirit of Jezebel and we have to realize we have to demolish and dismantle that spirit's authority in the church and its stereotype on women because women can't do what they need to do in leadership if they're always accused of having a Jezebel in controlling spirit women of God cannot you know flow freely in their giftings and callings if they if they speak thus to the Lord if they speak a concern if they speak like guys I talk about Deborah next week uh, as a judge judging uh, uh spirits testing spirits judging your motives your ways your methods and they're not considered you know a, a controlling spirit with a jezebel spirit so i'm gonna go to the next one which is the delilah spirit because another stereotype that's been put upon women that we have a lustful spirit we all for money man hungry we greedy we hurtful all the time we need healing and we broken all the time and there is women that are broken there's women that need healing but all women especially if they're operating in ministry and leadership are not always broken they're not always needing some healing healing and and and, 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 and always want a man all the time always lustful you know always want power and hungry and, you know for money and stuff like that all women are not like that and we not to have to put all the women in a box because it puts the it puts other women who are not like that in uh 
you know, a rock and a hard place. Like, we're not like that, you know. And they try to, you know, overcompensate that they were, we're not like that. We are children of God. We are women of God. We are women of authority and power. But we also are submitted and we are humble and we are led by the Holy Ghost in everything that we do and say and prophesy and teach. And then especially if we see something that needs to be done, that thing needs to be done according to what God says and tells them to do in decency and order. There is a way to, you know, to exhort and, you know, uh, bring forth your authority without being, you know, um, you know, uh, demeaning, bashing, belittling, or look like you're trying to condescend or trying to belittle anybody in leadership authority, male or female. Now, I'm going to go to the other spirit, the spirit of Delilah. Now, Delilah was in the book of Judges. Of course, she came across Samson. Samson was one of the judges. And next week, I'll talk about Deborah as one of the judges, uh, a prophet of God, and how God wants the Deborah's anointing and the Deborah's and the leaders and women in, fellowship, in leadership to come forth and realize that you have a place in the kingdom of God, that you have a rightful place, and that you need to flow freely in your rightful place. Now, Delilah came across Samson, who was a judge. And, of course, he was doing great things for God. And if you go into Judges 16... He was, you know, destroying the enemies. He had great, awesome power and anointing, but he had a weak side, which was women. So if you think about it, he had a lustful spirit as well. So to assume that all women, you know, that come to church want, want the leaders and want the people of God in the church, you know, is uh, assumptions. Um, there are spirits that do that. But it's always the ones that you do not think have a lustful spirit. It's always the ones you think that don't have a Jessica spirit have it. Because the spirit is very cunning and undermining, just like the Delilah. The thing about Delilah and Jezebel's spirit, they're very cunning and very undermining. Um, they don't also always be, you know, vocal. Sometimes they're vocal in their control. They're vocal in what they want. They're vocal in their manipulation. But sometimes they're very cunning and sneaky, too. So we have to remember the serpent came in, you know, subtly to eat. And so sometimes this spirit will operate subtly in male and female. Now, Samson had a lustful spirit, but so did Delilah. So... They both attract your own. You attract your own. If you keep on getting lustful spirits, you keep on thinking people have lustful spirits, then you need to check yourself to see man, whether you are operating in a perverted lustful spirit yourself. Because uh, sometimes you track your own kind. And, and you're going to attract uh, uh, what's in you. Now, Samson, Judges 16. Now, then when then when Samson went to Gaza and saw there, there was a harlot and went unto her and, and, and it was told... The Gazites saying, Samson's come hither, and they come past him, and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it's day, we shall kill him. So, he had already came across Delilah, and of course, I saw that picture where she cut off his hair, because she was trying to find out what his strength lies. And the bottom thing about Delilah was, her main thing was greed. Her main thing was money. And he used her body, she used her lust. And people will use their, you know, their their wiles, their wills, their whims. You know, they'll use whatever it is to manipulate and get what they want. And her main thing was greed and, and uh, money. Hermes was money. Her her main, you know, motive was money. And some people do have a such a moment when they come in ministry. Selfish motive, selfish agenda, and things like that. But we have to be mindful that everybody does not have a selfish motive and selfish agenda. And sometimes we have to look within ourselves as leaders and men and women of God that we don't have selfish motives as well. And that we're not operating in the Lila spirit, uh, being greedy, want what we want, getting what we want, getting money, getting things, getting all this because of greed. And sometimes what we we sometimes use our selfish motives and use our wiles and our, you know, persuasion, you know, uh, to get people to do what we want. And that's why all Delilah did. She used her, you know, persuasion, gift of persuasion um, and her influence to get what she wanted because um, she knew exactly which what, what his weakness was, which was women. So um, when it comes to Delilah, Delilah was persistent when faced with obstacles. She valued money more than relationships. And she portrayed the man who trusted her. So she was a portraying spirit. So she had many. And of course, in verse Judges 16, I'm going to go back to Judges 16, verse 3. And Samson laid till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon all his shoulders and carried them up on the top of the hill that is before Hebron. And in verse 4, and it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came upon her, unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, and that we might bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And the lot of her sis said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou 
Midas be bound to afflict thee. So the enemy will send forth people to uh, bring forth, you know, some form of seduction, some satanic bait. It can be, uh, you know, themselves. It can be, you know, through lust. It can be through money. It can be through the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And so his was the lust of the eye and the flesh. He liked what he liked and he wanted what he wanted. That's what Sam's downfall is. And the thing is about the Delilah spirit, you have to be mindful that when all women don't operate in that, that male and female will use their wiles, they will use their ways to get what they want from you. And the enemy will send out people, it will send out spirits, you know, to come to you to get to your weakness, your weak areas. That you, sometimes you're attracted and your weak area is money. So they're going to come with all kind of opportunities, all kind of, you know, um, business adventures for you to come across and they know oh, that's your weakness your weakness is money you want more money you don't think you have enough money um you think god is not blessing you enough so i'm gonna come like that so i'm gonna send forth you know a spirit of delilah a lustful spirit a spirit that's gonna lust because you lust the money see lust don't want what he want it can want money things property whatever it is so it will send out henchmen it will send out demonic henchmen to come again come to you and come after your weakness weakness which is money that can be money it can be people it can be things that be pleasing folks it can be your flesh it could be your issues it could be um things that you're dealing with that the enemy will come forth and deal with that weakness that's why it's important for us to constantly pray and allow god to strengthen us in our weak areas to deliver us from every way every sin and easily beset us um so the enemy does not come and be successful in you know what he brings forth to us every weapon that he forms will not prosper and of course this weapon formed against samson did prosper because he did not discern he was too busy you know wanting what he won't give what he won't and we have to be mindful as the higher you go in god that we have to be mindful that the enemy is going to bring even more you know spirits to come against us the thing is when it comes to women women are not like this all women are not you know in leadership won't you won't they won't you know but they're you know we have to discern and test those spirits to know who they're operating in because it can be male and female and so what god is trying to really say is that the people of god have to be mindful that these spirits it does not matter it's gender and we have to stop putting you know different labels and names upon women in leadership and ministry and assuming all women are put in this particular box put them in a particular category because god made us all uniquely and wonderfully made and we have to be mindful and be uh be remembering that god does not want to put people in a box he does not want his women in a box he wants them liber liberty and set free from every weight and every you know assumption and every stereotype and every myth that's been put upon women um, so that's what God gave me on that. Now, next, next video, of course, will be about, you know, the Proverbs 31 Wonder Woman. How it's an assumption that women post baby do it all, have it all, and not, you know, give reciprocity or rest between what they do for God, what they do for people, and if they're married, what they do for people that are when they're married as well. So that's the Proverbs 31 Wonder Woman. So that'll be the next video. Um, that's going to be a very insightful video because it's, it's important that God is, has a burden for his women to be truly prosperous and truly walk in their liberty and not assume that they have to be a certain way to not a, not to put a label upon them. They, they have to be a certain way to not put the controlling spirit upon them and not be a certain way that they're not a sassy spirit. Then they're not put a certain way that they're not being, you know, submissive enough or they being lustful or they being, you know, you know, um, doing, doing what they want to do and trying to justify it through their actions. So, these the, these are kind of yokes and bondage that God wants free from his women. So make sure you like and subscribe um, to this uh, channel. And, of course, the next video will be coming up later on this week. So make sure you know that, um, that you share this and that you're enlightened, that you're encouraging the Lord, that God loves you. I love you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Get saved and delivered, set free. And keep praying with purpose and power. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.